If you have your Bibles, be turning with me to John chapter 8. This is a special word for someone. I know it to be a deliverance word to set some folks free from lies. The message is entitled, The Value of Life. In John 8, let's pick it up in verse 29. Jesus is speaking to Jews and he says, he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do those things that please him. If you don't want to feel alone, do those things that please God, right? As he spoke these words, many believed in him. And then Jesus said to those who believed, it's not just enough to say, I believe. If it were, Jesus wouldn't say, if. <laughs> if you abide, continue to dwell in my word, you are my disciples indeed. It's not in theory, it's in deed. And you shall know the truth. When you keep his word, you'll come to a place where you know the truth. There's a difference between being able to memorize and quote the word and knowing the word as truth. And the truth that you know and practice will make you what? Free. Now get this. Then the Jews answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? They didn't know where they were on the map. Don't you know, they some people in the world need truth. Because truth gives you true direction. Gives you a moral compass. Without truth, you have no moral compass. You don't know what you're doing. And Jesus answered them, most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a what? That means you ain't free. If you're a slave, you ain't free. A slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Father, I thank you that you're going to part the heavens today, and you're going to come down upon your people. You're going to rent people's hearts and you're going to come inside of them and you're going to change them because you're getting the bride of Christ ready for the return of Christ and we must be about our father's business and quit playing church we ask you Lord to take us over take us up in your presence take me over and use me as never before God let not this stuff that's going on inside of me keep me from preaching the word of God the way you want it preached and everybody say Amen. let me ask you a question who told you you were unworthy who told you you were white trash or black trash or whatever kind of color trash people tell people they are? Who told you these things? What's worse than somebody telling you what you is or what you is not is that we believe it. There's people that tell people stuff all day long, but they don't believe it. See, if somebody tells you you're sorry and you're no account and you start believing that stuff, something's wrong with you. It's when you don't know a lie and recognize a lie when it's spoken over your life, that's where you're in dangerous waters. And that's why we need the truth because there's a lot of lies flowing around right now acting like it's truth. It's not even factual. Forget truth. It's not even factual. And they, they, pro, they just... Sending it out like it's the gospel truth. And people are believing it because they have nothing to stand on. They have nothing to fight these lies that are coming out from the enemy. The enemy is staying up nine day printing all this stuff, coming out with all these things. And they try new things every week, trying to get us in deeper and deeper in bondage. Can I get a witness? What, what, what we need to be concerned about, not so much that demons lie, we should all know that by now. But why are we believing the lies? They can work us like a cheap fiddle. We shouldn't be able to be played by the world. Oh, now you're done getting convicted. The truths in these verses that we just read give us understanding about the very power, how powerful lies are, and how more powerful 
the truth of God is to every person that will receive the truth, that will set them free from the lies that they believe and don't even realize they believe it. Whenever people decide that the truth of God contained in the Bible is no longer relevant or desired, they are playing into the lies and the very snares of Satan. Well, we don't need the truth of God. It's been around forever, and it's just not improving things, so we'll just get rid of the Bible, and we'll fix what's wrong with America. We'll fix what's wrong with the nations ourselves. We don't need you, God. We got this covered. How's that working? You know, we had it real well before Israel said, Lord, we don't want you to be Lord. We want, you, we want a man to be our king. And when they said that, God says, well, here's what's going to happen. He's going to tax you into oblivion. He's going to take your, your daughters to make confections and do all kinds of bakes and everything's for him and, and take care of him and love on him. And, and you, he's going to take your sons and he, they're going to fight for him. And, and he's going to take the best that you have and he's going to use it for himself. And you're going to be in bondage to your king. Is that what you want? And they said, yes, give it to us. Let us have him. We can do this. We want to be like every other nation. And that's where things get going rough. When we tell God that he is no longer relevant, no longer needed, his word is no longer needed in our lives, we're falling right into the plot and the plan of Satan. Once Satan gains control over the hearts of individuals and even nations, he can control them. Get this, y'all. Once you give yourself over to lies, Satan can control you, can control nations, control families, control the, the genealogy in families, the, the, the lineage of families. He can control them without them even realizing that it is him working through them. Wow. You're talking about stealth. Can't pick up bombers in the air because they have that stealth material on them that won't allow radars to send out beeps and send it back to the radars like, wow, Satan can run all over your life and you won't even detect he's doing it and working through your mouth. Wouldn't it be nice to know when Satan's using you? We'd probably say, no, that's a lie. <laughs> I'm perfect in all my ways. We see this in these verses. Jesus is telling them the truth, and they over there, the Jews saying, uh, we've never been in bondage, excuse us. They actually argued with Jesus, who is the Lord of heaven and earth, about their spiritual state and told them they'd never been in bondage to anyone. And this reminds me of what Paul covered in Ephesians chapter 6 because it says we do not wrestle or war with humans with flesh and blood, but our war is spiritual. And people, even in churches, do not understand the concept that we are in a spiritual battle, not in a physical war with people. It all started with a lie. It didn't start with somebody coming over into the Garden of Eden with guns and missiles and saying, we're going to destroy you. No, it was a serpent came in there with one lie. Hath God said. See, it's spiritual, y'all. A lie and its power is not a person, nor is it natural. But a lie can place you and place a nation in bondage and not even know it. Look at Israel in Egypt. God had to deliver them out of Egypt, did he not? What about the seven years that they spent in Babylon in bondage to the Babylonians? What about America who is trillions of dollars in debt and it's getting worse, not better? See how lies produce bondage in people's lives and we don't even realize it because there is an absence of truth in the nations, in the hearts of the people. If it wasn't for the truth that God has given to us and that Jesus spoke while he was here and lived out before his own people, we would all be lost and not even realize that we're lost. Jesus said, and Matthew says, if that light in you is darkness and you believe it to be light, how great is that darkness? How deceptive is that darkness? There's a lot of people that think they know the light, they know the truth, but really it, all it is is lies. It's been, it's been religious, made religious looking. 
and, and philosophical correct, but it's lies dressed up, and people don't realize that the, the light that they think they're seeing is actually darkness. Even Satan uh, transforms himself as an angel of light, the Bible says. Wow. Said if it were even possible, the elect of God would be deceived. Satan knows what he's doing, y'all. When a person is born into this world, they are born spiritually blind. You see a little kitten. There's a joke Ronald Reagan used to tell about that, but I, I want to lose half the crowd. <laughs> you ever see little kittens, the eyes are closed. That's the way the eyes of your understanding are when you're born into this world. They're closed. You're blind, spiritually blind. Thus, our hearts, because the, the eye lets the light go in. And if our eyes are closed, that means our hearts are darkened because of the void or the absence of truth or spiritual light. So when the truth comes, the light shines in, opens up our eyes, and when the eyes of our understanding are open, light goes into our hearts. That's why people can sit in churches and their eyes, spiritual eyes are closed. And they look around and say, these guys are fools. They don't know what they're doing. That preacher up there hollering at them. They sit in there amen in him. They don't know what's going on. They're so lost. It's because they're, they're spiritually blind. Their hearts are darkened. And they don't have a clue. But if their eyes of the understanding were to be enlightened, the hearts could be enlightened. And they would start seeing they is the ones that are wrong. Just as the sun gives light on the earth and gives the earth power to have and produce life, the truth of God gives light and life to the hearts of those who will receive it and live by it. We need light, do we not? We would perish if we lived in total darkness all the time. We've got to have light because God is light. We've got to have life because God is light. Life, whatever God is, that's what we need. And if we don't have what God is, we ain't going to make it, y'all. And the only way we can get that is through His Holy Spirit, through the truth of God's Word. The Jews are God's chosen people, but because they rejected the truth of God in the Old Testament, God, Jesus spoke and He says, I've sent the prophets, God did. To my people. And they stoned them. They rejected them. Throughout the Old Testament. They rejected the prophets of old. And in the New Testament. The greatest prophet. Jesus came to them. And in the New Testament. The Jews rejected Jesus. Yet once again. They didn't realize that they were lost spiritually. And needed a savior to save them. And this is exactly where Americans are currently. By and large. For several generations. There has been a concerted effort. To rid our society of the truth of God. And to a large degree, they have accomplished it. People are so afraid. Christians are afraid to speak the truth out in the open, out in the public. For fear of reprisal and, 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 and getting uh, persecuted. Can I get a witness? Because all they have to do is roar. And we bow down to the roar. A roar can't hurt you. Responding to the roar is what destroys us. Now because there have been generations that have been indoctrinated with human secularism. Now we have young people who do not know that they are spiritually lost. And that they are living in bondage to sin. Like the Jews said, we're not in bondage to anyone. Never have been, never will be. Thus we see how Satan is allowed by our spiritual ignorance of the truth. To control our lives and we don't even realize it until the truth is allowed to shine into our hearts. And then we say, oh yeah, we got a problem. No wonder you get problems arising in church services. Because the truth shines a light on the problems. And people don't like their problems brought out in public. Got quiet right there. That light starts going out and shining in the hearts and, and revealing the sin that is in people's hearts. And they start throwing a ruckus. That's a fit. Hissy fit. Right? 
and stirring up. And people listen to them stir it up and they'll start taking sides with the one that's got stirred up. No, that's the demons in them talking through them. And you need to stop listening to them and start praying to them, praying for them that God will set them free from the, those demons. Can I get a witness? And when they get saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, they'll have peace and they won't create a ruckus in the church. See, the truth will stir up stuff. Jesus said, I did come to bring a sword, uh, peace. I came to bring a sword, y'all. We try to have it so quiet and peaceful and nice in church services. Jesus come in there, kicks the tables over, pulls out a whip, starts beating people, run them out. See, God's going to get stuff out of people's lives if they stay here long enough. But nobody wants to preach the truth because of what it causes. You go to Africa, you preach the truth, those demons be flying out at you. It looked like you were in Wizard of Oz, you know, when it's real dark and all those demons are running around. It's like, wow, we're here. The demon will bring, I mean, the, the truth will bring those demons out. They, they steep in voodoo in a lot of regions in Africa, and you start preaching the word of God. Those women have been just abused sexually, mentally, emotionally, physically abused and, and beat up on. And when you start ministering the word of God, that, that stuff starts coming out of them. And you've got to set aside a time in the service to minister to them and set them free. I mean, when they can levitate, you know that's not natural, y'all. The consequences. There's always consequences to telling God no. The consequences of raising generations of people without the influence, without the impact or direction from the truth of God is people won't know their worth. Now you know where we're going. I just showed my hand. See, when you take the, the truth of God's word out, you're gonna, people won't know their worth as God's creation, nor as God's children. And that's where we are. But what I want to, I need to address this. Did God walk into, into Adam and Eve's house there in the garden and say, uh, y'all, before, well, that was the southern part of the Garden of Eden. Y'all, Anybody come in here and ask you your value, run them off. God didn't talk to them about their value. He didn't tell them about their significance. I remember in Genesis 1, 26 through 28, he created them in his image and his likeness, and he gave them dominion and gave them purpose. But I didn't hear him say, yeah, y'all y'all worth a lot. Y'all are significant. You know why? He loved them. That didn't even have to be brought up. And he showed his love, demonstrated his love, by giving them dominion, giving them divine purpose. So worth wasn't even in the equation between God and his children. Who brought the worth subject up? Wonder where that came from. Oh, there's some, some people going to have some lights come on in your head and your spirit pretty soon. Now, when we tell God no for generations, and we lose that impact, and we're slowly, and now it's quickly. See, something may not look dead for a while. You, you take a, 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 a plant, a good healthy plant, out of its uh, system where it's rooted in the soil, and you lay it out on top of the soil, it'll look alive for a while, won't it? And you may go back the next day, and it may look a little dry, but it still looks like it's got some life in it, right? Then you go back the next day, and it looks like it's a lot drier, but there's still a little green inside of it, so it must still be alive. But then after a week or two, it starts drying up to where it's almost like nasty looking. Can I get a witness? So, so that's where we are in America. It's getting to the place where it's so dried up spiritually in America. Things are looking nasty. Can I get a witness? Because sin is taking us over, and, and because of sin, you've got the, the death that comes as a result of the sin because of the wages of sin is death and we're seeing death taking over people's hearts and lives people who choose to live in bondage to sin do not know their worth sin is beneath us 
I wish somebody had taught this a long time ago. You weren't designed for sin. Sin came out of the, the most vile, corrupt heart that has ever been created. It came out of the heart of Satan. When he said, I will be like God and I will exalt myself, my throne above the stars of God, it was his corrupt heart that caused sin to come into existence. God did not create us as humans to have sin inside of us. It is beneath us. But we settle, don't we? Because we got that pleasure bug. To discover our worth, we will have to be willing to hear and apply or obey the Word of God in our hearts. The Word of God gives you back your value, your worth. It lets you know that's not for you. Sin is not for you. Death is not for you. Sickness and disease is not for you. Yeah, and you're preaching sick. That's right, I'm rejecting it while I'm preaching. I'm going to overcome it. It came, but it's going to pass. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Just because I'm in it, I'm not of it. Verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we're in this flesh suit, are we not? We do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. So what is that war against? It's against lies. I stated that at the onset of this message. We're fighting lies, y'all. Satan can't touch you, but his lies can. They impact us every day. The weapons that God gives us in this warfare, they're not carnal. They're mighty through God to pulling down strongholds. Strongholds hold entire nations in bondage. Look at India. Millions of gods in bondage to religion, y'all. And the people are so blind. Many people are blind because of the religious gods that they serve because the gods of this world blinds people. 2 Corinthians 4. And it causes strongholds, fortification. Uh, Jer Jericho is a good picture of a stronghold. Walls so thick they could do chariot races on top of it. That's a stronghold, y'all. Casting down arguments. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought. That's where it starts. In the thought. Into captivity to the obedience of Christ and ready to punish all disobedience once your obedience is fulfilled. You got to get your own obedience straightened out before you start correcting others. That's what it says. Being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. They people in the world, they correcting us. They ain't got it right themselves. When you get it right, come back and talk to me. When we believe the lies of Satan, those lies will produce death in us. But we don't really see it as that. So let me break it down for you. Not only does will his lies, Satan's lies, produce death in us, it will cause neg negative results in our lives that affect how we view ourselves and others. Now we're talking. See, we, we don't really get the concept of death because we're still alive. But we will get the concept of negativity. How I many knows there's a lot of negativity in the world, and it's worse now than it's ever been before? And you think, where in the world do they come up with all this negativity? Well, they got a little God called Satan that's feeding all that into them. Negativity. He's the God of negativity, right? And so he wants to influence us. You know how he's going to influence us? Through negativity. Because if you do not respond to negativity with positivity, you will become negative yourself. Amen or oh me. And most times Christians respond to negativity with negativity. Thus they become negative. And when you're negative, that means you have nothing. 
Negative is not a positive. Negative is a negative. Unless they changed that. Did they change that? Now that it's been preached on, guess what? Negative is the new positive. <laughs> Nothing's sacred anymore for them. Now, let's get back to being serious for a moment. Before Christians, that's us, before Christians can cast down any vain imagination, any lofty idea like you're going to exalt your throne above the throne of God, that's a lofty idea, or bring every thought that is wrong into captivity, we will first need to have a hunger to know the truth of God and to stand on the truth. If you don't meet the lie with the truth, you, you will fall for the lie. You've got to have something in your uh, weaponry, your arsenal, to counteract the lies when they come, or you will receive it. Because without the truth, you won't recognize it. You've got to be able to recognize it. That's why there's called a gift of discernment. The Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth, and He will give you discernment so that you can recognize a lie 40 yards away before it even hits your thought process. But if you don't have the truth, you cannot counteract the lie. And it comes in and you believe and receive that truth. Now that lie is producing death in you, bondage in you. But if you know the truth, the truth will set you free from the power of the lie. But if you don't have the truth in you, and the, there's generations that do not have the truth in them because they said no to God, no to the Word of God, no to churches. Therefore, rogue imaginations, lofty ideas, thoughts, and spiritual strongholds are able to be fortified in our hearts and minds, and they will take root in us. And they're doing that. That's how Christians become religious. They don't want to go on in the truth, so they back up and go in tradition. Tradition is not truth. Tradition is what people settle for when they don't want the truth. There is a distinct difference between the truth of God and the lies of Satan. Now the world would tell you, no, there, there's not that much difference. Truth won't cause death to take over your body and life. It won't. Truth will never produce death in you. Matter of fact, if you receive truth in you, it will swallow up the death in you. Because those who believe on the Lord Jesus, though they die, yet they shall live. Because truth sustains you, it carries you from this life to the next life. And the only way to get from this life to the next life is through death. But a Christian does not die absent from the body present with the Lord. Can I get a witness? The truth of God sustains us. In the transition. Truth won't cause you to live in bondage to anyone or anything. Whenever you're not in bondage to anyone or anything, you're free. And if there's one thing this world does not hate, does not like, is free. They hate free. Men and women coming back from Vietnam. Getting spit on. Cursed out in the airports as they're returning. Arms blown off. Legs missing. Half their head gone because of shrapnel. Can I get a witness? And people out there with signs picketing that. You know why? People in bondage don't like free. Jesus came to set the captives. And what did they do to him? Killed him because people don't like free who are in bondage to sin. So they kill free. So what they will do is God never charged us anything for anything that he's ever created for us. You don't go out to a, a fig tree and look and it says $9.95 for a dozen figs, does it? And down below it it says G-O-D. You don't come to church and say, uh, well, before we pray for you, God charges us $1,000 for a miracle, $10,000 for a deliverance. No, it's all free. 
So who put a price on stuff? Satan did. Then man took it on whenever man took on sin and started putting a price on everything because nothing can be free any longer. By whom the Son of God says free, they are free indeed. Now your freedom is going to make somebody mad because they're not free. And you thought it's because they didn't like you. No, they don't like your freedom. Well, I tell you, God really pouring that on you. I'm going to have to get this CD and listen to it myself. <laughs> so, truth won't allow us to live in bondage to anyone or anything. Truth won't destroy your life. It won't. A lie will. Matter of fact, the truth will give you life. And then it'll cause your life to be blessed beyond your ability to imagine or even ask God because truth starts working inside of you to bring the blessing and the life back into you. That's what God's truth does. That's why Satan fights the truth because once the truth comes in and it gets inside of a heart, it starts growing, it starts blessing, it starts increasing. You remember uh, Obed-Edom, the, son, the servant of, Ed of Edom, he had... Uh, David was doing something stupid. He did that quite often, it seems like, in the Bible. But he did this one thing. Uh, they were allowing oxen to carry the, 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 the uh, ark of God. And the oxen, uh, you know, they must have had the, 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 the uh, pavement like we have here in North Georgia full of potholes. And, and, the, and the oxen's cart got in a pothole and the the, the ark started falling off, and Uzzah thought he could help God. Don't try to help God, because when he tried to help God, he, he, he killed him. You can't help God. Leave him alone. He'll fix himself. And, and so David says, wait a minute, this ain't good. So they said, we need to hide the ark. So they took it to Obed-Edom. And while the, the ark was in Obed-Edom's uh, house, he started getting blessings. I mean, they things that wouldn't fix, they started getting fixed. Favor started coming on his life. Everybody, all the neighbors looking around saying, what's going on over there at his house? The, the blessings, things are just coming on his life. That's the truth inside the house. And the only thing we want is a TV. Oh, did I say that? So the truth won't destroy your life, but it'll give you life. Then it'll bless the life that it's given you. Lies that are believed will cause us to sin and place us in bondage to sin, place us in bondage to Satan, and yes, place us in bondage to people. Give us a king. They put themselves in bondage to, to a man. We do that automatically in sin. We go out and put ourselves in bondage. Somebody cute. We go and marry them without even checking their credentials. At least with Google, you could go on and research a product before you buy it on Amazon. You don't even go on Google and say, John Smith, I want to know what this dude's about before I go getting hooked up with him in marriage. No, we go and marry him and then find out we married a demon. Amen or oh me. Because sin loves bondage. I just want what I want. I don't care what I have to go through to get it. So they marry a demon. Ask Samson. He got what he wanted. He didn't like what he got. Because sin loves bondage. So if you like bondage, you might want to check your heart. Sin might be hiding out in there. Is anybody getting free? Lies from Satan will tear us down. Not only will they tear us down, they'll devalue us as humans, even as Christians. I remember a president several years ago telling Christians to get off the high horse at a prayer breakfast, a national prayer breakfast. You Christians need to get off your high horse, promoting Islam. You know, something wrong with that. That's a lie. But you've you got to hand it to the man. Because when he spoke, people listened to him. Oh, he could speak just as smooth. Yes, it's Obama. He could speak so smoothly. And Christians were so intimidated by him. 
They were. And he'd say something to rebuke openly Christians, and it shut down the entire denomination. Well, we can't come up against that. Why not? Because lies tear people down, and it devalues us. So was he lifting us up? No. He was tearing us down, and it devalued us, and we devalued ourselves by letting his lies influence us to shut down the truth. Somebody needs to get the truth back in America. Do you want to go deeper? Genesis 3. You don't get to the root of the problem. Go back to the beginning. Verse 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field. He's very subtle. He was sharp. Which the Lord God had made. And it was that particular beast that Satan used and chose to do his dirty work. And he said to the woman, the serpent did, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, Watch what the woman says. Look very carefully at what she says. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you what? She said that, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be, uh-oh. And you will be like God, having the ability to know good and evil. Wow. Let me ask you something. We know that was a lie, right? But who was the lie centered on from the serpent? It was on God and his word, his commandments. God said, don't eat lest you die. So in one lie, he comes against God and God's commandments. The first lie that is recorded in the Bible was launched against God and his word. It wasn't a sin that caused the fall of man, except the sin came from a lie first. You got to get that in your spirit. You can't just say, well, it's sin. No, it was the lie. All right. If I drink something poisonous, what's going to happen to me more than likely? I'm going to go into paralysis, and if I don't get something to, to counteract it, I'm going to die. The lie was poison. The sin was the result of the lie. Who did Satan, through the serpent, direct his lie toward? God and truth. When he came against God and truth, it caused Eve to see God and truth in a different light. That's what people in Washington and in Hollywood have been doing for generations to America. Painting God and truth and, yes, the church in a, 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 a dismal light, a negative light, and it's caused people to see God, the truth, and the church in a negative light. That should tell us everything that we need to know about Satan and his lies, shouldn't it? However, because the serpent presented the lie. See, it's all about presentation, y'all. That's why I don't do very well in, in social media because it's my presentation that kills the reach. People's told me that. I understand that. I'm not here to impress you. I'm here to get you saved. Amen. See, the serpent is all about, the world is into presentation. If you ever notice when the, the, the White House is ready to roll out one of their new policies, they don't just come up to the camera and say, this is what we're going to do. No, they send it out to the news agencies around the world. 
In three days, the president is going to come out and roll out his new plan for America concerning this new problem that's going on in the nation. And for three days, you'll hear nothing about anything else but the big rollout of the plan. And then five minutes, they come out there, and they talk for 30 seconds about the rollout plan. And you say, wow, I'm in awe. And all it was is, we're going to try to fix it. We're going to try to fix it. So just bear with us. And you think, it was all about the presentation. Well, the, the, the serpent presented the lie in such a way to cause Eve to view herself as a victim of God. See, it, it wasn't just the lie. It's how she received the lie. When she received the lie, it made herself see herself as a victim of God. She was more than content after she saw through the eyes of that lie, the perception of the lie, that lie. She's more than content to receive that lie into her heart. You know, God really doesn't look out for you, Eve. This is, I'm going to paraphrase it for you. If he really wanted you to be like him, it wasn't enough that he created you in his image and his likeness. There's still something else that you lack. You don't have his knowledge. And since he held back that knowledge of good and evil, then that tells me that God really doesn't have his best interest at heart for you. And so by him painting that picture, it made her become a victim in her mind of God. God is holding back something from me. So I'm just going to show him. I'm going to eat this fruit. How'd that work out for you, Evie? Don't work out too well, does it? <laughs> the serpent, please bear with me, I'm almost done another hour. The serpent caused Eve to believe that God didn't value her as much as he did. If God really was God, he, he'd let you in on the secret about the tree of knowledge, good and evil. But because he held it back from you, he don't want you to be like him. So notice how he presented the lie. It made it appear that God was preventing her from knowing good and evil like God. And for Eve to be like God, she would need to know good and evil. That's what he's saying, right? Someone may be arguing what I'm saying right here, that she didn't know what she was walking into when she acted on the lies of Satan. But we said, she told the serpent in the day that you eat of it, God says you shall surely what? Oh, she knew what she was walking into. She was walking into death. But that pleasure for sin caused her to ignore the consequences of sin. Paul tells us that the serpent deceived Eve. She was deceived. However, she knew what the consequences were. If she obeyed it, it was going to be death. Unlike Eve, we now know very well what happens to our souls our, and our life on earth and to the world around us when we choose to hear, believe, and accept lies over truth. We know, y'all. We've chosen the lies. America has chosen the lies. And look where we're headed. If, if God doesn't intervene, we're headed into third world status very quickly. All except we're going to have bigger debt than third world countries. We're going to have nicer cars than third world countries. But we're going to be in a third world status. Because we believe lies over the truth. We know that the lies of Satan produces death all around us. We know all this, y'all. We've seen it. We have evidence of it, right? Look at us, y'all. Over 60 million fetuses aborted since the lie of abortion has come out. Where's the value of life in that, y'all? Who placed the value on a fetus as being zero? Satan did. Now, because Eve allowed the serpent to convince her that she wasn't of any significant value to God, say, where in the world did you get that? It's her response. 
if she if she if her value did not come into question in this dialogue between she and the serpent she would not have chosen the the sin but because she chose the sin she received that lie that God was holding something back from her it caused her to devalue herself see we don't need anybody devaluing us we we got it all on our own we can do it ourselves just leave us alone So because Eve allowed the serpent to convince her that she wasn't of any significant value to God or he would not have kept her from knowing good and evil, she chose to devalue herself and received death into her being, into her family, and into creation. It didn't just affect Eve. It didn't just affect Adam. It affected the Adam's family. It affected everybody that's born in the race of Adam. Adam was over 6,000 years ago, and people are still dealing with the consequences of Adam and Eve's decision. That's how pervasive it is. Now get ready for this. Genesis 4. Y'all blessed? Verse 1. Now Adam knew his wife. And she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from where? Not enough response. I have required a man from who? She conceives a child with her husband and says, this, this man child came from God. Right? Where would she get such an outlandish idea? God told Eve after she had sinned, the consequences of her sin says, but you shall be saved in childbearing. Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of the sheep and Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought an offering to the, of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. And Abel also brought of the firstborn of the flock and their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but God did not respect Cain nor his offering. And Cain, in response to God's rejection of his offering and of him, Cain got very angry and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry and why has your countenance fallen? It wasn't, get this y'all, it wasn't God's rejection of Cain's offering or God's rejection of Cain's uh, person that caused Cain to get angry. It was that God was showing Cain his heart's not right in the offering. Because if he did brought the right offering, God would have easily, because the Bible tells us, he would have quite readily received the offering, would he not? Read on. If you do well, will you not be accepted? So it wasn't God that had the problem. It was who? Cain. It was wrong in his heart. He came into the service with a wrong heart. I wonder where he got that wrong heart. And if you do not do well, for uh, sin lies at the door. It crouches. Literally, that's what the word lies means. It crouches at the door, ready to pounce on you. And it's desires for you, but you should rule over it. You have power right now Cain to rule over sin because it's in the infancy stages it's just starting in you so nip it and Cain talked with Abel did he take up God's advice no he talked with his brother Abel and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel and his brother his brother and what Cain didn't value life because Cain believed a lie Lies make you devalue life. So Abel, uh, he rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. And then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel your brother? He said, uh, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. 
Cain had many opportunities to do things right and get things right, but, but he never would cooperate with God, so it lets us know his heart was evil. Watch this. God made a promise to Eve that she would be saved through childbearing, correct? Yes. yes. Therefore, she made the assumption that her firstborn son will be her salvation. I have gotten a man from the Lord. So she wrongfully assumed that Cain was the one. She was wrong. Don't you hate it when your mom's wrong? Because your mom's your world. And she's got to be right. If she ain't right, nothing's right. This is the result of her believing, Eve believing a lie and allowing that sin to blind her to the truth. When you're blind to the truth, all you can do is make assumptions. She made an assumption that God had given Cain to her and that he was accepted to, uh, acceptable to God. She made that assumption. This one's acceptable unto God. However, Cain wasn't open to God nor his instructions just like his parents. <laughs> the lie was perpetuated. Imagine being told as Cain, you're Cain. Imagine you're Cain. And you're told throughout your childhood, even into adolescence, that you're the chosen son. You know how moms like to brag on their children? Mine did. Number seven is perfection, y'all. I didn't come up with that. I didn't choose to be born number seven. God did. Seven happened to be his perfect number and so mom liked to dote on me she loved me so Eve makes the assumption and tells him you're the man God's chosen you going to use you to deliver our family and the world from sin and the consequences of sin now imagine you're walking into service with your mama's pride on your shoulders I'm all that and I don't have to do what God tells me because my mom and daddy didn't do what God told them to do. Now imagine that you present your offering unto the Lord while thinking you're the chosen son. And God tells you that your offering and you are not accepted. Now you understand why he's so angry. He believes something that was not right. When you believe something that is not right, it will cause you to have a wrong response to something that is right. You ever tried to tell your children to do something right and they get mad at you because something is wrong inside of them? Never. Now you understand why. So do you see how the lies of Satan that he believed about God produced death and destruction in her children's lives? Wow. Because Eve didn't value God. And didn't value his word because that's the two things the, serp the serpent's lie was directed at. Because she didn't value God or his word by trusting the Lord and obeying his instructions. She opened her heart and the hearts of her family up to destruction that undermined their own sense of value. Consequently, Cain had no value for human life. It was nothing for him to kill his brother. He didn't have value for his own life. People who take other people's lives don't even value their own because in America, I reckon there's still capital punishment. Look at our society now, y'all. Based on what, you, look at it through the eyes or the prism of, or the viewpoint of what this message has taught you about concerning the lies of Satan and the truth of God. Look through that prism for a moment. Are Americans more open to the truth of God or more open to the lies of Satan? You can't hardly get the truth out, y'all. Social media platforms censor us. The stronger it is preached, the more they censor us, y'all. There's very little value placed on human life anymore because the wages of sin is what? Turn with me to John 3, and we're done. Does this help you? 
Now go out and speak the truth. They don't like it. That's not your problem. That's theirs. Verse 16. For God so loved, so what? So what? He so loved. Who? The world, the lost. That he did what? He gave. He gave. So since sin came through the lie, sin places a value on everything and it's devalued. It's like socialism. Everything is devalued. Right? Are y'all going to help me? That's what they do. They devalue everyone and everything in socialism and communism. But God says he loves the world so, the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. He, he placed another value. Not on Christians, on sinners. That whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So God not only very, uh, per, uh, valued the lost, he valued life. So much so that he was willing to give his son's life. That's the price of life. The price of life is a life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. He didn't come here to condemn us, y'all. But that the world through him might be what? He who believes in him is not condemned. I like that. If you're a Christian and you believe in Jesus Christ, tell condemned to leave. It has no part in you. You're believing a lie if you're up under condemnation as a Christian. Because Jesus didn't come to bring condemnation into your life. But he who does not believe is what? Condemned already. God, Jesus didn't have to come con to condemn us because our disobedience and sin condemned us already because he has not believed in the, the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the, the condemnation that the light has come into the world. And it's not the, work, the light that condemns people. It's that men love the darkness rather than light because their deeds were, their deeds were evil that brought the condemnation. For everyone practicing evil hates the what? So if you're a light, they're going to hate you. And does not come to the light, they won't come to your party either. Because they don't want their deeds brought out. So I spoke of how someone might argue that Eve didn't really know what she was doing to herself or to the world where we live now. And after reading these verses from John's gospel, we know beyond any reasonable doubt that God truly loves us, do we not? We know that. He's demonstrated his love. While we were yet sinners and enemies of God, according to Romans 5, God gave his son for us. And God does not want anything but the very best for us. Right? And if you start preaching the very best for Christians... You get persecuted. You're a prosperity evangelist. Really? I call it getting my stuff back. Because that thief, he came to steal, kill, and destroy. And when I accepted Jesus, all that stuff coming back, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Because, get this, get this. Because Satan owes us back pay. When they came out of Egypt, the Jews came out, they came out with back pay. Even though Satan spoke through the serpent and convinced Eve to believe his lies and to be willing to live with the results of spiritual death, we know the truth about God and his love for us. He gave his son, his, his one and only son. By doing that, God placed a value on the redemption of, of our souls, of our lives, and of our family. God placed that value. But sin was the one that required it. For God so loved that he gave his one and only begotten son to buy us back. That's what redemption means. To buy us back from being enslaved to sin so that we can become liberated. Not only did Jesus come to give his life as payment for every person's sin, but he didn't condemn us while he was here to redeem us from sin. God's love. Why are you going over this? Do we not know this? Not in this light. 
God's love is demonstrated by the depth and the power of his compassion for sinners. And God values sinners. Satan does not value sinners. Satan exploits sinners. He uses sinners. The, the political arena exploits classes of people for their own ill-gotten gain. They will take somebody that is un, underprivileged and make them the, their poster child. And while they are presenting them as their poster child, they're raking in, raking in millions of dollars because they're exploiting that class. There's a class of people that politicians exploit. And if, you, if you'll vote for us, we'll help y'all out. You know what they're doing? They're devaluing them. Our help does not come from the mountains. Our help comes from the Lord. When was the last time a politician really helped you? John 8. I'm giving you scripture to prove what I'm saying. Verse 1. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now early in the morning, he came into the temple, again in the temple, and all the people came to him. And he sat down and taught them, and then the, the scribes and Pharisees, good old boys, brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? What I want to know is why didn't they just stone her? Why they got to bring Jesus in on it? Here's why. This they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. They're exploiting this woman, y'all. And the world talks about how the church treats people. They're exploiting this woman, y'all. She's obviously naked. They've got to have evidence. I mean, if she's fully clothed, it ain't going to look like she was caught in the act of adultery, right? Let's get it right, y'all. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the, the ground. Was he moved by their stuff? No. Why are we? Aha, uh -huh. there lies the lie. If they move us, they got something in us. The, the prince of this world is coming, Jesus said, but he has nothing in me. He can't touch us. We got to get to the place in Christ where he ain't got nothing in us and he can't touch us. We worried about all that's going to go wrong in America. If you got God filled up inside of you, he can't touch us. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, he who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. So did he condemn her? No. He fought for her. Imagine that. Fighting for a sinner woman caught in the act of a sin. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it being convicted by their conscience. See, he didn't have to condemn them. Their own heart condemned them. Went out one by one, beginning with the oldest even to the last. And Jesus was left alone, the woman standing in the midst. Jesus raised, uh, when Jesus raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those what? Accusers of yours. Has no one condemned you? And she said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. He gave her a commandment. He didn't just let her go. If you continue in the truth, the truth that you continue in will make you free. So he gave her truth along with the freedom. You get your freedom, but you got to get the truth with the freedom. If you don't get the truth with the freedom, you won't keep your freedom. I saw a clip where 10 people had received millions of dollars in the lottery. Spin it on riotous prodigal living and in no time flat were back impoverished on welfare 
on Skid Row or they were dead because they took their life. The men that threatened to stone this sinner woman to death were obviously religious men because it says they're scribes and Pharisees and they knew the law of Moses. Even so, the men placed no value. That's what religion does. It places no value on sinners. Religion will rob from the vulnerable. They exploited the unprotected Jesus said I've come to gather you up under my wings and to be a shepherd to you be careful who you open yourself up to if it's not Jesus they've had no value for that woman they had no respect for that woman even in the face of our hard evident y'all that should have condemned that woman to death Jesus still refused to condemn that woman to death. He had every right to condemn her, right? That wasn't why he came. He stayed on task. He wasn't going to fall because it wasn't about the woman. It never was about the woman. They were trying to use the woman to get to Jesus to see if there's anything in him. And if he would respond to them about her, then he was in bondage to them. So Satan was using them to get to him about her. Jesus refused to condemn her. And he didn't have to because her sin had already, and the men had already done that. He was there to save her soul. Now, allow the Lord to reveal to you your value today. And when something negative makes you go negative, see that as a warning sign. I told you God's going to hit some people right between the eyes to set you free. If something negative makes you go negative, there's something negative in you that it's attracting. If you will let the Lord place the value on you and not people's words, your life will be forever changed for the good from this day forward. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Stand your feet. God bless y'all. Father, I can't.